Hi, my name is Jonathan Heath. I'm the executive chef at Eskabim Badjan in the Hunter Valley, and I've been a chef for a little over 10 years. Um, I come from a very food oriented family. Uh, my mother's side of the family is Greek, my dad's South African, so food was always a massive thing in our household, and my mom is probably the best chef that, or cook that I know. Um, so I started cooking from a very young age. It was more baking and making cakes and things like that. And after school or during school, I couldn't imagine anything else that I would rather do than to be a chef. That's a tough one. You learn so many things being a trainee. I trained in a, in a massive hotel that did large scale banqueting. It had fine dining restaurants, it had you know, tabla dot restaurants. Um, the most important lesson that I probably learned was always give 110%, um, never slack, you're always in the eyes and always come early for your shifts. I trained at the Lord Charles and it's a rather rigorous process getting onto the traineeship there. Uh, they start off by you have to submit um, sort of essays on why you want to become a chef or why you want to do front of house management and they probably get about 700 letters from that they choose about 70 you go for your first round of interviews and then from that they actually choose 11 after one year of being an apprentice or uh, orientation trainee you get to do a full apprenticeship and they choose three people out of that 11 so me just getting onto the traineeship at the Lord Charles Hotel was probably a really, a really big accomplishment. Um, being offered a chef de party position when I was only a second year trainee, which I, which I took, um, was also a really big accomplishment. And the places where I excel is most probably fine dine. Uh, I've had a love for fine dine since, since I was 18 and it was the first little, I don't know, it's, it's just exciting seeing beautiful food in a plate and and getting to use different cooking techniques and it's yeah it's a love in its own to do fine dining. Um, I had the opportunity to open a brand new restaurant in a big hotel. Um, I joined the hotel group and it led to me traveling all around Africa. Um, experience a lot of different kinds of cultures and cuisines and eventually my last stint with them was at the age of 22 to take over as the head chef for the opening of a massive hotel where I had 56 staff working underneath me and I had to train them from scratch and open up a hotel that had 11 different food and beverage outlets and big conference of banqueting, uh, a la carte, bars, swimming pools, um, cafe menus and that was in its right a massive challenge but I grabbed it with both hands and excelled and you know I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have that challenge I think. The biggest challenge for me was realizing that you're right at the bottom that you've just come from high school you just finished high school and you were you know did lots of sport or whatever and captain this side or you're a prefect or whatever but all of a sudden now you come into an environment that you are literally right at the bottom and you have to take a lot of nonsense from a lot of people and you do take a lot of nonsense but it just makes you stronger at the end of the day but for me that was probably one of the biggest things that I had to overcome is realizing that I was right at the bottom of the brigade. Personality traits are being thick-skinned is probably one of the most important things that you, or one of the biggest attributes you could have. Um, like I say, you do you do cop a lot, and being able to take it and just yes, chef, no chef, carry on with your day is probably the biggest trait. After that, dedication and passion, obviously, it, it goes hand in hand with the environment that you're in. One of them is when I get messages or 
phone calls from my old apprentices or you know guys that trained underneath me saying that they've they've just got this job here or they're in Monaco or they're in the US or they're on cruise ships and they're actually doing something really really good with their lives and, and with the career um, that makes me extremely happy because um, development is, is a massive part of, of what I try to do um, day to day things that make me happy is probably just guest reactions um, reviews that we get, you know, people saying it. Oh, they've never had things. They've never tried this. They've never, they've never experienced food in this sort of way, or those sort of textures together, or things like that. Really, really excite me. Probably the long hours, um, the high heat, high stress, high intensity. Um, as soon as you start to have a family, it, it becomes a little bit sort of testing. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, if you're happy and, and, and you love what you do, nothing's challenging. Putting my career first all the time. Um, working hard, being ridiculously dedicated, coming in on my off days. Having a yearning to, to learn more, to know more, and just soaking up as much knowledge and as much um, passion from other people that you can. Don't back chat. Yeah. Have yes chef, no chef answers and don't back chat. If you want to be a well-rounded chef and you want to be able to do anything with regards to the cooking world, that balance is ridiculously important. Um, knowing what you feed your customers, knowing what you're putting into their bodies, um, knowing what you're doing in the kitchen, it's, it's imperative. You have to know it. Um, it just, it makes, for every single thing that you do, it just makes sense. You, you'll be able to put dishes together and you'll be able to put menus together and they'll be well-rounded, they'll have good balance, they'll have uniqueness and they'll also be healthy for your guests and I think that's the direction that everybody's going to at the moment, health, being health conscious, using alternate starches, um, not your general rice, meat and potatoes type thing, you know. Well, on our menu we have, there's literally, there's only one dish on our entire menu that has gluten in. Even we do lots of crumbing, you know, things are crumbed, things are floured or whatever, but we use either tapioca starch, rice flour, um, gluten-free flours, uh, polenta, all that kind of jazz to, to crumb and um, finish off dishes because there's so many dietary requirements. You know, every, every second bloke has got a dietary requirement now and to appease people and also we found that using alternate things like crumbing something in polenta um, it's actually, it gives such an awesome texture that, like, why would you want to do it any, any other way, you know? There's a different way to eat, and I try and verge away from doing the traditional meat and three veg. I like paying homage to beautiful, humble ingredients like a carrot or a turnip and just doing really way out things with it, so using dehydrators, using sous vide cookers, um, using different applications to really highlight humble vegetables and fruit because I think a lot of people when they go out to restaurants, they forget that, you know, all food is good, but if you can make something humble like a carrot or a sweet potato, if you can make that absolutely amazing, ah, oh, it's just, it's incredible. Um, you don't have to go for your truffles and foie gras and wagyu beef or ch you know having humble food can be just as good as all those other foods <laughs>